and um, get started. Again, welcome to the live stream of Holy Covenant MCC's worship service for Sunday, February 21st, 2021. It's good to have you all with us today. Uh, and if you don't already, as I mentioned before, make sure you have a cracker or cookie or bread or something, and as well as something to drink for communion, which we will be sharing later on in the service. Also, um, from your Lent in a bag, grab that shell, um, So, because we will be talking about that later on in the service. It'll be it'll be actually be part of my message today. As will all the symbols as we go through each week of Lent, I will be using those various objects as the focus of our message as they bring out the deeper meanings of, of Lent. If you did not receive a Lenten bag, if you weren't able to make it to our Ash Wednesday service, um, <laughs> yes, it is Shell Day. Um, if you weren't able to, to be there for the Ash Wednesday service or you don't live in the area and would like a Lent in a bag, um, please let me know and I can mail one out to you as I did to, uh, to Barbara all the way to Oregon. So uh, we can do that for you if you would like. Uh, some other announcements, as you may know, MCC recently elected new elders to the Council of Elders offer guidance and input to the governing board of our denominations. They're the denomination, they're the theological um, body, so to speak. They reflect and pray and uh, create worship and, and so on. Uh, and they offer guidance and input to the board of our denomination. And a blessing for our new elders will be held on Tuesday, that's this coming Tuesday, the 23rd at 2 p.m. Central. Um, via Adobe Connect. The link is in the newsletter if you would like to um, watch. The uh, presentation by Elizabeth Heber on powers of attorney and other documents for LGBTQ plus seniors, uh, which we had to cancel uh, earlier this month, has been rescheduled. Um, it will now be Wednesday, March 10th uh, at 7 p.m. via Zoom. The link is in the newsletter you can contact me. As always, all of our meetings and so on, the links, the, the Zoom links are in our newsletter. And if you don't get our newsletter and would like to, please put a note in the comment box or the chat box and Barb will add you to our email list via constant contact. Uh, Sage does continue to meet via Zoom at 1 p.m. Uh, SAGE is a uh, group of support and um, education resource for LGBTQ seniors. That's anyone over 55, I think, 55. Uh, and if you'd like, again, if you'd like to join us, uh, contact me for the link. We're having some changes to my super pastor. Uh, beginning in March, we're going to meet on the second Thursday of the month. Instead of the second Monday, will be the second Thursday of the month at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Um, and also, if you would either arrive by 6.30 or let me know um, by email, chat, messenger, um, whatever, um, that you are planning to attend uh, by 6.30, just so I know. Um, I, <laughs> rather than sit in front of the computer and wait for nobody to show up. Um, in our first meeting at that new day and time will be Thursday, March 11th. Uh, and again, the link is in the um, newsletter. We're still doing a few things that need some help um, around the fellowship hall. So if you have a couple of hours or a day, um, please let me or Marianne or Barbara know and we can make sure that you um, are fit into the schedule. Our ministries are still continuing, even though we're not in person. Our book studies, our um, the Share Food, Share Love Food Pantry, Thrive with Pride Cafes, uh, Pints with the Pastor, um, and, you know, there's the usual, of course, maintenance. Even though we aren't meeting in the building, we still need to maintain it. So any gift you can give is greatly appreciated, and we do thank you for that. I am available always by email, phone, Facebook Messenger, text, 
uh, for any pastoral care needs you may have, or if you just want to talk. This can be a lonely time, um, and I am available for conversation and, and support. Our opening prayer this morning is by Reverend Kathy, Kathy Swar. Communion liturgy is by Reverend Barb Hodges Godey. So let us pray now. To you, Holy One, we lift up our hearts, our souls, our very lives. We rejoice in your presence. We raise our voices in thanks and praise. Pour your spirit out upon us as we worship author of life. Lead us and teach us that steadfast love and faithfulness may mark our days. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the Wisdom of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the child of God. As it was written in Isaiah the prophet, I send my messenger before you to prepare your way. A herald voice in the desert, make ready the way of our God, clear a straight path. And so John the baptizer appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to John and were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist, and he ate nothing but grasshoppers and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, John said, One more powerful than I is to come after me. I am not fit to stoop and untie his sandal straps. I have baptized you in water. The one to come will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. It was then that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan River by John. Immediately upon coming out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Then a voice came from the heavens. You are my beloved, my own, on you my favor rests. Immediately, Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he remained there for forty days and was tempted by Satan. He was with the wild beasts, and the angels looked after him. After John's arrest, Jesus appeared in Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The reign of God is at hand. Change your hearts and minds and believe this good news. These are God's words. Amen. Will you pray with and for me, please? Wise God, give me your words to speak, your grace to share your love to show. As we begin our journey through this season of Lent, may your spirit guide us to repentance for wrongs done, thankfulness for amends made, and encouragement to continue on the path of love and grace. Amen. So I'm going to start with a very brief, I promise, bit of background. Purity and cleanliness were very important in first century Judaism. And we saw a bit of that last week when Jesus healed the person with leprosy. And the person had to be certified as healed by the priest and make a sacrifice of thanksgiving for being healed and, and cleansed. Purity applied to a lot of things besides physical health. You know, there were kosher and foods. Uh, their fabrics could be kosher or not, women during their periods and immediately after their pregnancy, and so on. So purification um, rituals existed for most objects. You could uh, bury a pot for a certain time uh, in the earth uh, if it had held non-kosher food, for example. Um, you could boil utensils. 
Uh, people, of course, could not be buried or boiled, and so they washed. Uh, ritual baths for cleansing are called mikvot or mikvah in the sin singular. Um, wealthy people might actually have their own, uh, and every town of any size had one as well. And they're still used today by observant Orthodox Jewish people. You'll see them in, um, usually attached to a synagogue. Um, New York, they're here in Chicago, they're in D.C. Um, but this is not what John is doing in his baptism. Koshering, or making something kosher, pure again, is different from baptism, although it's a sort of related concept, isn't it? Um, but in uh, the difference between, uh, you know, kosher and non-kosher, pure and impure, the person or object has become uh, impure through, not through a choice, right? They gave birth or they had to wash uh, a dead person, a, a body of, you know, their parent or sibling or whatever. Uh, in baptism, however, the individual is repenting of sin, of mistakes or bad choices, right? As we say. Baptism in Christianity is the entry into Christian community, the act of God in welcoming a person into that community. Because it's an act of God, it doesn't need to be repeated. It's not a naming ceremony that grew out of the early Christian practice of taking a new name um, on baptism to symbolize that new life. Remember that most early Christians were baptized as adults, right? not children or infants, and they already had names, you know, at the age of 12, 15, 25, whatever. So where baptism and koshering are similar is in their use of water. And that's why we're looking at shells today. If you have that Lent in a bag kit, grab your, grab your shell and look at it. And if you don't have the kit, take a look at one of those behind me or, or just think about about shells. They come in so many shapes and sizes and colors. I remember the local dime store when I was young had shell packages. There was one large shell, like a very uh, large mussel shell. I don't even know what, what kind it was, but it was filled with all kinds of other shells. And sometimes there was coral or a dried starfish in there too. I think they were intended for parties or home decorating, you know, there was that fad for a while of putting a net on your bathroom wall and attaching shells to it and so on. Um, my sister and I, however, just like to look at them and try to identify what they were. They were all shades of lavender and purple and brown and gold and rust and some were even red or yellow. Some were smooth and satiny, and others were rough. Some even had spines. The coral had been dyed all sorts of colors, blue and orange and neon green and hot pink. The starfish, they did not color. <laughs> when I lived in Maryland, <coughs> excuse me, we used to go to the Atlantic beaches several times a year. Ocean City, Rehoboth, Virginia Beach. And we would pick up more shells, so, uh, sand dollars and mussels and oysters. And of course, we would eat crab, this being the Chesapeake Bay, um, which of course have shells too, right? Crabs have shells. I think of all those shells when I think about baptism. People and shells are both individually unique. No two are exactly alike. And in the same way, our baptisms are unique because we come to Christian community in very different ways. Some of us were baptized as infants and have no memory of it. Others were maybe young children or teenagers, and some of us, like my father, um, were baptized as adults. Some of us were baptized by the pastor or sprinkling water on our head. Some were baptized by pouring and some by immersion. Some of us were baptized in a church, at a font, others in a river or in a pool. 
And the point is not how or when, but that it happened, right? With that act, whenever and however it was done, we were welcomed into the Christian community. And of course, that's not the only way to welcome folks into Christian community, um, but it is our conversation today. So one last bit of history, and then I promise I'll stop. Um, baptism and reception into the Christian community, traditionally, again, in the early church, took place at Easter. And this was symbolic, because as Christ died and rose to new life, so too did the new Christian in baptism. They died to their old life and rose to new life as a Christian. So Lent, therefore, was a time when those who were seeking to be baptized were prepared for this new step in their lives. Prayer, classes, fasting, repentance, um, that was all part of the preparation. And people who were already members of the community joined with them, with these prospective members, in the prayers and fasting and meditation uh, in support and to reinforce their own spiritual journeys. Now, these days, baptism can take place anytime, um, and many churches are more likely to take Philip's baptism of the Ethiopian eunuch as a model. Remember, he met him, Philip met the eunuch on the road, and uh, they had conversation, and the Ethiopian eunuch said, hey, um, here's water, here's a river. What's to prevent me from being baptized? And Philip said nothing at all. And so he took that man and he baptized him, just right there. No classes, no training, no, uh, yeah, just did it, right? But Christian, the point is the Christians still baptize, right? The specifics may have altered and we may have more options, especially these days, a virtual baptism, anyone? Squirt guns, trying to keep that distance. Um, but the central act is still present. A person comes, repenting of their errors or other do what others do on their behalf, as parents do for children, um, and is touched by cleansing water. And these shells can remind us of our baptism, whenever and wherever it occurred. Even if we haven't been baptized, we recognize the focus of baptism the desire to let go of our past mistakes and move forward into a clearer And this is one of the benefits of Lent, a time specifically designated for reflection on changes we want to make in our lives, how we want to improve going forward, whatever improve means to us. Maybe it's about how we treat others, or what we eat, or how we move our bodies, or what we read, or how we think of ourselves. The thing about shells, they can affect, right, what's inside, but they can also constrict. Hermit crabs leave their old shells and find new ones when the old one becomes too small. Chesapeake Bay blue crabs shed their shells and grow new ones every year as they grow. Lent is a good time to shed our old shells and find or grow a new one, especially if that shell is constricting us from being all that we are meant to be. Keeping us growing. This week, think about shells, all kinds of shells, oyster shells, crab shells, snail shells, scallops and clams and mussel shells, each one different, each one unique, as each of us is unique and a reflection of God's grace and love. Think about what you want to leave behind in Lent as you journey toward Easter. What unkind words 
what unfulfilled promises, what tasks left undone can you let go of? Can you leave behind like an old shell? What can you, how can you move forward then? With kind words, promising only what you can do and then doing it, or caring for others in ways you have not done yet, caring for yourself. Let this shell, whatever shape or color you may have, let it be a focus for your prayer and meditation on what changes you would like to make in yourself, how you could leave that old shell behind and grow or find a new one. And may spirit be with you. In God's names, amen. As we move into the time of prayers, I invite you to share questions, comments, um, prayer concerns that you may have in the chat box. And hello, everyone, Joni, and let's see who else joined. Jim, hello, Jim, and Barb and Marianne. Good to have everyone with us. Pink Coral and Key West. Oh, that's appropriate, isn't it? Okay. So if you have any, uh, any prayers, please put them in the comments or in the chat box, and I will include them in our community prayers this morning. So let us go to God in prayer. I start with a quote from Martin Luther King, Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. He said, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden to bear. Only one. Your house is built with understanding and compassion. It is our quiet center. If only we could grasp its power in small agitations and overwhelming calamities during times of lament and great injustices, help us to turn towards love. Pray for the people of Myanmar as the military coup continues. We continue to pray for the Rohingya people who have suffered genocide, displacement, and many horrors. Help us to stick with love. Create in us a yearning for justice and help us to understand the power of our words. We continue to pray for the police officers who defended the U.S. Capitol at such great cost. Support their families and communities as they mourn and as the officers heal. We continue to discern what happens. We hear of heightened extrajudicial killings taking place in the Philippines during the pandemic. We pray for our elected leaders around the world. We celebrate the release of Joe Ligon, 82 years old, sentenced as a juvenile in 1953 at the age of 15, life imprisonment. I like to be free, he said. His attorney worked for his full release without parole after serving 68 years. Remember that Jesus was imprisoned and executed by the state authorities of his day, and that many prophets were as well. Peter, Paul, George Fox, Dorothy Day, Martin Luther King Jr., Nelson Mandela. We ask you to protect those who defend justice public defenders, judges, court specialists of all kinds, chaplains. Be present for those who are on the inside, 
Give them strength as they cope with circumstances we on the outside can only begin to imagine. Walk with those who transition from incarceration to community. Sustain those who prepare the way of re-entry with compassion and forethought. Protect our children of color. Help us to dismantle the racism and white supremacy that is pervasive in our institutions and world. Open our eyes to the over 2,121,600 men, women, and youth imprisoned in the U.S., the highest rate in the world. Healing God, you witness families, states, and countries divided even as the pandemic ra ravages and has killed 2,400,000 plus people across 192 nations. How much suffering can we endure? We see persons of color, women as essential workers, the impoverished, those with disabilities, and the imprisoned carrying a disproportionate burden. We pray especially for the people and healthcare workers of Mexico and Yemen, where the death per case, cases diagnosed with COVID ratios, COVID-19 ratios, are the highest in the world. Sometimes it feels like we're in this alone, powerless, cowering in some place without direction. In these moments, bring your understanding. Forgive us for the things we should have done, might have done, the if only we toss about. Help us to consider the times when we, when we remained silent, the places in our heart where we indeed nurtured hate. Justice is hard work, awkward and sometimes painful. We stray, we recommit, we reconsider, we vow. And it does feel like sacrifice. We feel the pressure of time. We ask ourselves, how long? Return us to the quiet center that we may discern your will to work among the most vulnerable and those that need our collective voice in the world. As we entered Lent this past Wash Wednesday, we are reminded of our physical needs, our need for heat and electricity, shelter and food, safety and access to rescue services. We lift up our siblings in the US, in Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, Alabama, South Carolina, and elsewhere. We are reminded of vulnerabilities in conflict, pandemic, and climate disruption. And we are so very aware of how much we have lost this past year, given up, or had taken away from us. God have mercy. We are also compelled to look at what we cling to needlessly, harbor at great cost and burden. Help us, dear God, to let go of what is no longer of use to us, to hold close the treasure of one another, and in all things, to stick with love. And even as we pray for the world, we pray for individuals. We pray for those who must work outside or who are unhoused in this extremely cold and snowy weather. We pray for Holly's client who's, who suddenly passed away. Be with family and friends and loved ones as they mourn. We live also the prayers of our hearts. Speak them, my friends, and know that God hears us. And so we gather up these prayers and offer them to God as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our creator who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive. 
matters. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now we come to time for communion to share that meal together at God's table. Once again, get your cracker, cookie, bread, and something to drink so that we may share this meal together. God Almighty, we give you thanks for your creation and care, for the words and witness of those who have gone before us and of those who live the Christian life alongside us. We thank you for your steadfast, eternal presence, even when we do not see, hear, or follow you. You sent your child, Jesus, to reveal your love. Birth, life, death, and resurrection, you reveal to us the way, the truth, and the life. Not just at the transfiguration on the mountain, not only in his baptism in the Jordan, but in this very time and place, through the bread and cup you give us to share. And so we praise and thank you with these people in this place and with all your people across every time and place. By the work of your Holy Spirit, reveal to us that we eat together at the very table of Christ Jesus. Make us one with you and one with each other. Through this holy meal, Teach us to know and follow your way. Ground and settle us in your truth and make us sharers of your abundant and eternal life. Confirm what we know. Reveal to us what we do not know. Fill us up with whatever we lack. Keep us faithfully in your service until we feast together in your eternal realm. Following Christ Jesus himself, the way, the truth, and the life, we do what he commanded us to do. Like him, we take bread, and having given thanks, we break it and give it to the disciples, saying, as Christ Jesus did, Take, eat, this is my body, broken, you, do this in remembrance of me. And also like Jesus, we take the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my love. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and eat the cup of love, the bread of life. Loving and gracious God, we thank you so much for this meal in which you have shared yourself with us. May we be strengthened as we begin our Lenten journey to emerge from the shells of the past and find your road to the future. Amen. So a recap of our announcements for anyone who might have missed them. Um, we, began this, we began it with Wednesday this past week. This is the first Sunday in Lent. Um, this is a time of preparation and remembrance as we move toward Easter. And the shell that I was referencing during the um, service comes from our pamphlet, our Lent in a bag. As you can see that. Um, and if you did not receive one for whatever reason, um, a Lent in a bag, please let me know and we can mail one to you. Or if you have a key to the church, you can stop by and, um, and pick one up. As you may know, um, MCC recently elected new elders uh, to the Council of Elders. And a blessing for the new elders will be held on Tuesday. Uh, that's the 23rd at 2 p.m. Uh, Chicago time. 
via Adobe Connect. It's not by Zoom, it's by Adobe Connect, and the link for that is in the newsletter. And the presentation, Elizabeth Heber on powers of attorney and other documents for LGBTQ plus seniors has been rescheduled to um, Wednesday, March 10th, and that's at 7 o'clock. That is by Zoom, uh, and the link is in the newsletter. And of course, SAGE meets via Zoom on Fridays at 1 p.m. And um, anyone, uh, they, the age cutoff is 55. So if anyone who would like to join us is certainly welcome. If you have a couple of hours or part of a day free to give um, to helping us finish up the last details uh, with the fellowship hall, that would be very appreciated. Contact me or Barb or Mary Ann to see what needs to be done and when she'll be there and coordinate all that. Uh, don't forget to make your donations via PayPal, Square, electronic check, paper check, or um, we're thankful for all your gifts. And now we prepare to leave this place, this time, this space. Let us pray. As we turn to go about our days, Holy One, be with each of us. Bless us. Keep us in the shell of your protection and love. And open our hearts to what may be outside that shell and encourage us to leave it. Guide us as we begin this Lenten journey with your child, Jesus. May we find enrichment, wisdom, and hope in the weeks to come. And now, my friends, may the creator of all things bless you. May our guide be ever-present for you. And may spirit inspire you with grace. Amen. So I'm going to duck back over. I'm on Zoom right now, but I'm going to duck over to Facebook Live and see how things are there. Anything else I should know? It's again, it's it's good to see folks here. This is just great. Um, all right. Take care, everyone. Have a good week. Stay safe. Stay healthy, um, watch the weather, and wear your mask. <laughs> Take care, everyone.